The IPCC fifth assessment concluded that it is extremely likely that human influence has been a dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid 20th century, based on the evidence from published detection and attribution studies. This is a visual demonstration to explain the principles underlying many of these studies. Our aim is to show you how climate scientists combine models with observations to draw conclusions about the causes of observed changes. Like all detection and attribution studies, we begin with observations. In this example, we look at changes in global average near-surface temperature over the past 150 years. Colder years are coloured blue, warmer years in red. We compare these observations to the response to human influence on climate due to rising greenhouse gases and other forms of pollution, estimated by averaging a large number of current climate models. Like the observations, the models warm over the second half of the 20th century, but to assess whether the models have the size of this warming correct, we also need to consider other factors too. The most important of these are volcanic eruptions, which temporarily cool the climate system. Variations in the power output of the sun also play a role. The blue line shows the average of the model's estimates of the response to these natural climate drivers. The black line shows the model's response to the combination of human and natural influences. It tracks the observations closely over most of the century, but appears to be too warm in recent years. You can see it is sticking out above the dots marking observed temperatures. What does this mean for understanding of the causes of recent warming? To find out, we replot exactly the same data. With the size of the model's average human-induced warming in the horizontal instead of time, like this. We still show one dot per year and the height of the dots is unchanged. They are just rearranged. With this way of plotting the data, the orange line is now just a straight diagonal. And you can see even more clearly how the models track observed temperatures through the cooling dips due to volcanoes. The model's warming overshoot in recent years is even more obvious. To allow you to compare observed temperature changes with model responses to human influences and natural factors at the same time, we need to make this plot three-dimensional, like this. The height of the dots tell us how much warming was observed in each year. Their position in one horizontal direction tells us how much the models warmed because of human influence and their position in the other direction indicates how much the models warmed or cooled due to natural factors. If we rotate this plot around, you can see how the warmest observed temperatures occur at the back right corner, indicating both human and natural factors are playing a role in these observed temperature changes. To estimate the size of this role, we rotate this around and find that it is not just a random cloud, but the points all lie close to a sloping surface like this. The slope of this surface tells us the most likely size of both human induced warming and natural fluctuations in the observed temperatures. The models on average appear to be getting the size of the response to human influence about right, but they appear to be overestimating the response to natural factors. We assess uncertainty in this slope by varying the position of the surface like this. To see how this changes the average distance of the surface from the points, indicated by the length of those little pins. The size of the best fit human influence is shown by the slope of the best fit surface in that direction. Now we can go back to plotting in two dimensions to see what this implies. After allowing for the fact that the models may be over or underestimating the response to human or natural factors, we find an even better fit to observe temperatures, and the discrepancy with the past few years has been resolved. If we go back to plotting against time, it is clear that human influence is the dominant factor accounting for the warming since the mid 20th century, even after allowing for the possibility that the models might be over or underestimating the response. The point of this demonstration is to show that this conclusion is not purely based on models. The best fit between the models and observed temperature changes is obtained with most of the warming since 1950 attributed to human influence on climate. Further information and data sources can be found in the Working Group 1 Contribution to the IPCC Fifth Assessment, Chapter 10, Detection and Attribution of Climate Change from Global to Regional 
by Nathan Bindoff, Peter Stott and co-authors. Thank you for your attention. We hope you have found this useful.